So I'm going to take a quick look at the syllabus just to kind of remind us where we're at. <clears throat> this is the week of October 5th. So you see uh, we're going to start with the ninth assignment, which is Pinterest. So we'll talk about it today and Wednesday. And then the homework will be given on Wednesday due next Wednesday. The Facebook assignment, I sent out the email saying will be extra credit. So you can do the Facebook assignment or not. If you do do it, you will get extra credit. And I got a few emails from people about um, incomplete grades and such. Don't worry, we'll get it all figured out. Um, but for this week, we'll look at Pinterest. Next week is coming up Vine, <clears throat> then Periscope, YouTube, and then other things as the class goes on. So if we look at it in just terms of number of weeks, the semester lasts 16 weeks. And this week is week seven. So next week we'll be halfway through the semester. Hard to believe. It feels like it just started, I think. But we're going to be halfway through. So, quick show of hands. How many of you have ever used Pinterest before? A few people. Okay, good. How many of you then that have used Pinterest have used, however, a business Pinterest account? Okay, so we're going to look at that today. Because there is a difference, actually. Kind of like when we talked about Google Plus and Facebook, there's the personal profile and there's the business profile. Personal profile and business page, actually. So with Pinterest, it's very similar. There's the personal one that maybe you have some experience in, and then there's the business one. It's going to be very similar to use, except that you want the business Pinterest account because it gives you analytics. It gives you statistics how well you did, how well your pins um, were, were effective and such. So that's one of the reasons why we want that. So what we'll need to do is create the account. Go ahead and open your web browser and we'll go to Pinterest.com, Pinterest.com. Pinterest. So it's got a lot of reliance on graphics, just like most networks. They're very visual. This one is, is more, uh, from what the statistics show, Pinterest is more popular. Maybe it wasn't really geared toward them, but it's become much more popular with women. So if your demographic is that you're trying to reach a female audience, Pinterest is one of the best networks to get on because organically it seems to have grown that more women are using Pinterest. Pinterest also has sort of like uh, a culture of, of like crafts and do-it-yourself and tutorials and tips like that. So when you go to Pinterest.com, the first thing that you'll see is some sort of maybe big banner here to entice you to, uh, to sign up, and it's going to change. So mine says, they used Pinterest to give their kids a head start. Okay, I'm just going to refresh my screen to see different starting screens here. She used Pinterest to think outside the classroom see another one. He used Pinterest to start his collection. And it says, join Pinterest to find and save all the things that inspire you. So here it's showing it in terms of someone that's using Pinterest. Why would they care about using Pinterest? So this guy here, I guess, he's starting his record collection. He's looking up possible albums and such on Pinterest, saving them. Okay, that's great for a person, but for a business? Well, for a business, maybe I sell records, maybe I have a subscription model, maybe I'm a company that would do really well if people paid attention to me on Pinterest. So always think about it in those terms. Yes, social networks can be fun, can be cool, can be time-consuming, can be overwhelming, but what can you use them or how can you use them to reach an audience? So let's say Victor's Bakery. That would be perfect for Pinterest in that I could be taking photos 
of all of my cookies and baked goods and the, the, the bakers in, in the kitchen and posting them up here. And yeah, people will see them and like them and comment, but I'll easily then have a way for them to buy that cupcake, to order um, a birthday cake and all of that. So let's say I'm also, let's say I'm a realtor. I could be showing photos of all of the great million dollar homes that I'm selling. And people that are also searching on Pinterest for that could find my homes, could get in contact with me, they could follow the link and hire me. So throughout this course we're going to be touching on all the social networks. Well, not all of them, but all the big ones. And you might think, well, that's a lot of work. Do I really have to know Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram and Vine? It really depends on what you're trying to do online because no, you might not need to ever use Google Plus or Twitter. You'll be fine on Facebook and Pinterest. Or maybe you are trying to reach a large audience, so you will try for a while at least five networks. Part of the reason you're doing that Excel assignment, which you should be you know, logging in and, and adding to it every week, part of that is to see, well, I'm getting a lot of attention on Twitter, but not too much on Google+. So that could show you either cut off your efforts on Google+, and focus on what's working, or try different tactics on Google+, to get more activity. You may decide, I'm only going to choose one thing. I'm going to be an Instagram pro. That'll work too, probably. Whatever you're trying to do will work as long as you keep it up and um, do it, uh, you know, authentically and um, on a regular basis. So on, on the real world, my company, um, we do, we have a package, we do web design for companies and we do also social media. And then people always ask me, how much should I charge for all of this? That's never really an easy answer to give because it depends on your experience and the client and what they need and everything. But let's say if someone, if a company, a local company came to my company and they wanted us to do social media, there's many ways that we can run it. We can say, okay, we can do $100 per platform per month. So let's say they want Twitter. So we'll charge them $100 per month. Well, what does that entail exactly? That could be one tweet per week, which is very, very, very basic. So $100 really is not going to cut it. Let's say $500 a month. That's a much better cost because then you could run a couple of social media platforms for that. Maybe Facebook and Twitter at the same time. And I'm going to say from experience, it really is not helpful to run, to get a job as a social media marketer and to, and to run it so defined, like, uh, you know, two tweets per week or five posts per month. You want to be, you want to be fluid, you want to be open, you want to be open to different things. For example, you know, on most of our clients, we do a little of Pinterest and a little of Twitter and a little of Facebook not always like on an exact schedule, just trying different things. Checking our statistics will then help us to decide what works. Question. Like how much time do you like invest like in social media? Do you think it's a good... Sometimes it can be really short and effective, and sometimes you spend a lot of time to be effective. For example, like on, on Instagram, you can quickly take photos of things and upload them and you're done in 10 minutes, and that's fine. Maybe on YouTube you're going to spend an hour to create a video, and that works also. So it really, really varies. But in our company, some days it's really quick, and some days you have to spend a lot of effort. So the more you do it, the better you get at it and better experience, and then you can kind of decide how much. But you know, even 10 minutes per day is a really good starting point. You know, 10 minutes, you, that, that's easily you can accomplish that. So that's a good goal for a beginner, 10 minutes every day social media. And so we're going to create an account here 
if you go to Pinterest.com, it asks you to either continue with Facebook or create an account here. Don't do either one of these because these here are for personal profiles. We don't want personal, we want business. So do you see if you scroll down, you see a link there, businesses. That's what we want. We want the business account, not the personal one. If you've already used Pinterest before, but you created it as a personal account, we can actually upgrade it to business. And you would want the business one because that'll give you the ability to do boosted posts or boosted pins, the ability to check statistics and all of that. So let's click on what I business. Did, I signed with my Facebook account. That's good. No, I, I don't. I still wouldn't do it with Facebook because it's going to attach to a personal. Maybe what you should do is just close that web browser and open a different one so that it doesn't remember you. That's what I'm saying. You might not be able to see a logout, so just close the web browser and open a different web browser. So when you click on that business link, it says get discovered by millions of people looking for things to plan, buy, and do. So one of the successes, one of the ways to be successful on Pinterest is to really think in the active, in the active tense, you know, like, a, like verbs and actions. So here it's saying people that are looking for things to plan and buy and do. So if I'm Victor's Bakery and I'm selling cupcakes and such, I might be putting out my photos of my cupcakes on Pinterest, but I'm also going to be putting out, let's say, a recipe. So it's like do-it-yourself chocolate chip recipes. So that's something that people can look at, can favorite, but also do. So think about it in terms of your followers doing something, buying something, planning something, being active. When we do it together here, you'll see more examples, but this goes on to explain other, other features. You can look at tools, success stories. Is that Mila Jovovich right there? The blog. So you say join a business? Yeah, let's do that. Let's click join as a business. Did you notice there it also has, if you previously had an account, you can convert it. So you, uh, you two that already had an account, you can either create a new one or convert this one. But you have to decide your current account if you want to turn it into a business one or not. And if you don't, you can just create one. Let's see, join as business. So it'll ask for your email address, for a password for Pinterest, business name, that all should make sense. Business name. Uh, in, in this case, again, kind of like Facebook, this is not the place where you put your, your Pinterest address. Uh, Pinterest.com slash Victor's Bakery. No, this is the place where you add your address that is visible on your profile, but not the address. We add that on a different screen. Select your business type, and there's not too many, but hopefully yours fits in there. So Victor's Bakery would be maybe a local business. Maybe I could even do brand, retailer. So whatever, whatever fits with you, and you can change this later. I'm going to go with local business. If you have a website, you want to add the website there, and this will link your Pinterest account with your website, which could give you more traffic. So you'll want to click Create Account. One of the ways to be effective on any social network is to see 
what other people and companies on the network are also doing. So remember that assignment where there was a paragraph you needed to answer. Who's your aspirational competition? Who are you in competition with that you're trying to, to do better than? So on Pinterest, it's asking you here, okay, follow some of these topics so that you can see pins, so that you can see inspiration, you can see what the competition is doing. When you see the kinds of pictures or the kinds of text or the kinds of content that others are sharing, hopefully that will give you an idea of what you can share, about what you can pin. So you should choose five topics here. If you don't find a topic, you can search at the top. Let's see. So I would choose ideas that relate directly to your business. And also maybe one or two that are kind of in a tangent to your business. They're related, but not directly. Sometimes I see here the topics, for example, of um, like uh, entrepreneurship and small businesses. So I see desserts, so I'm going to choose that. Healthy snacks. So there's life quotes and inspirational quotes. Again, that doesn't exactly, on first blush, sound like it's related to my bakery. But I could maybe see some of these quotes, uh, whip, whip up a simple Photoshop graphic that has some sort of inspirational quote with a picture of one of my cupcakes. So that's going to hit people in different ways. The quote and the picture, and that might entice them to follow me like my post, maybe buy the cupcake or whatever. I chose five topics and then I'll click done. You might get step two which then says why don't you connect your Facebook or Twitter account so that we can see which one of your friends is already on Pinterest. That might be useful for you to connect with other people on Pinterest that you've already connected with on other networks. But it might not be useful if you're trying to launch your business on Pinterest and you're bothering your friends and family again, follow me on Pinterest, look at my pin, buy this thing. So you can skip this, it's actually right here, skip, so this is totally up to you. I, I really don't recommend it because if I'm doing this for a client, I wouldn't quite be connecting their Facebook with their account and my own Facebook with my personal friends might not really be a good fit with that client so I don't see too much of a use for this to artificially perhaps build your followers and such but if they're not going to be buying your products or really caring about your company then that might not be that useful. You can't have the business within years like you, like you already have one. You can. You can have two separate ones. The only thing is you're going to need two separate email addresses. So one email for personal and one email for business. You know, you can create another free one at Gmail or Yahoo or whatever and then set it up for more than one account. So I'm going to click skip. It's going to say, are you sure you want to skip? You're going to miss out on everyone's projects? Yes, skip. In the browser, this browser button when we actually start to add stuff on Pinterest, there's going to be different ways to do it. 
One of the fastest ways to do it is with this button, but for the moment I'm going to skip it. I'll come back to it. Um, because if we add this to the browser, it's only adding it to this computer. When you go home, you don't have it anymore. So I'll talk about how to add it a little later. So just skip. It's going to say again, are you sure you want to skip? Yes, skip. Okay, so the, the first thing that we see then after choosing all of these topics is this um, screen full of content and imagine then you probably see a bunch of things here that you like. Imagine then this is your, your goal as well. You're going to eventually be putting content on Pinterest that people will see and hopefully also have the reaction. Like right away, right now, I'm fighting so much my urge to go look at this link right here about 23 insanely clever ways to eat cauliflower instead of carbs. I'll look at it later after class. But I want to interact with these things. So look at what they're doing. Think about how can I borrow that idea and do it myself. Obviously a lot of these are very professional. Look at that photo and the text and such, but even something like this, let's take a good photo of your product. You can do that. You can take out your phone and take a, take a nice photo of your product. The big secret about photography is light. If you're going to take a photo of something, make sure there's a lot of light. If I was going to take a photo of something in this room right now, it would look terrible and I would not use flash because flash never looks good unless you have professional flash. So I would take a photo of my product with all the lights on, or near a window with a lot of light. Maybe I'm not that much of a pro with photography, I could never make this kind of photo, but I know a little bit of Photoshop and I can put text on a picture. That's another way for me to get an idea of posting something. This is just a font. No one drew this. Someone chose a font, they put it on the picture, and then that's catching attention. So text on a picture. This one here is a little more complex because it's one picture and then the next step and the next step and the next step. Obviously a person had to shoot one picture, then another one, then another one, and then put them together in Photoshop or some other graphic software. So like this, Spanish churros. So lots of photos here. So can you do like a pretend company? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Anything really in this class. Ideally, I want you to do it for a real company, but just to learn it and to get a grade and such, yeah, a fake company just works. Pretend company, yeah. Um, so, again, I'm just seeing lots of photos. Yeah, because I chose the topics. I chose the topics of food, so it's an overload of food pictures, exactly. Okay, so before we get too much further on this screen, uh, let's look at a couple of, of other things. Uh, on the very top left corner, we have the Pinterest button, which if you click it, always takes you back to this main uh, timeline. I think it's got an official name, but I forget what it's called at the moment. This main screen. That little P will always take you back there. We've got a search box. If you click there, it might give you some... some uh, concepts of things that are trending. So kind of like trends on Twitter, but for me apparently it's saying chili mac and cheese, Sicilian love, Minnie Mouse costume, cornbread. Do we able to post something here? Or? We will. Oh. Exactly. We're going to be able to... It, the, on Pinterest they call it pinning. We're going to okay. pin something, but we're going to pin very soon. So there's some... There's some uh, trends here. I'm just going to click on the first one here, chili mac and cheese. Let's see what that's about. And if you choose a trend, it's just going to show you a bunch of pictures about that topic. 
So at the top, it searched for that. I'm just going to close the X here. Let's say, okay, let's say I was a realtor. So I'm going to search for realty. As I start to type, it's going to give me suggestions. Realty, realty logo, realty humor, realty quotes, realty photography. It's also going to give me suggestions of companies on Pinterest or people on Pinterest that have something to do with realty. And then it'll give me something called boards. We'll talk about boards in a moment. But again, think about that I typed a keyword and I found a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to think about keywords when I pin something in a moment, when we, when we find out how to pin. I'm just going to choose Realty Photography, see what we get. Four real estate photography tips. Seven steps to your best headshot ever. What should you charge for real estate photography? Seven great tips. How to stage and photograph your house to sell. Okay, so this is giving me more inspiration. I'm seeing that people are giving advice and tips. But notice, if I want to read how to stage and photograph if I if I click, I still just get the picture. I want I want the tips. Well, it's gonna be a link. It's gonna show you a link to take you back to the original. This went over to blog.hireahelper.com. So on the website is where I actually see the tips. So do you actually pin it the thing or? No, this one someone else pinned it. Oh. But then I'm seeing they pinned this basic preview picture. And when I click the link attached, then it takes me to the whole article. The, that it's only a tease? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like when, it, when it's like really small, <laughs> and then you click on it and it sends it to some other website. Like... Well, unfortunately, that's like the main tactic of Pinterest. So we're going to have to, we're gonna have to learn to embrace that technique because that's really the way Pinterest works. Now, we don't want to abuse it, but really, almost everything that I'm going to see here is just going to have a quick preview, and then the full article is going to be on another website. So, anyway, I wouldn't really be able to put my whole article as one pin. I'd have a really, really, really long, really small picture. So we still are going to have to usually have some sort of link elsewhere. So this one, for example, is not leading you somewhere else. This one is, why is professional photography important to realtors? And in this particular pin, it's got all the information. This obviously takes a lot of effort to design, but this is like a complete one-stop pin here. Here's another one. How to look better in pictures. Uh, importance of professional makeup for a photo shoot. What a difference professional makeup makes. Here's before and after. So, you know, you get a little bit of info. This is makeup done by herself. This is makeup done by a professional. Well, how does it get done? You have to follow the link. This goes over to, what is that? Aline alinavincentphotography.com and then here is where you get the full article. So this is this is pretty much how Pinterest is. You're going to see some preview which then leads you usually to some other website. You can of course put in a more complex picture like that but it's going to be a picture. It's not going to be blog text like on a regular website.
Okay, so we've got the uh, we've got the the little pin trust pin search button, the main screen. We've got the ability to search. We've also got these little three lines here that will that will guide me to different topics. So let's say if I click on that menu and I want to go look at animals and pets, humor, etc., photography, outdoors, this will take me to these sections. Right now we're talking in general about what other people are doing on Pinterest, what other companies are doing on Pinterest. Hopefully that's to inspire me when we talk about adding pins ourselves. Hopefully then that will inspire me to add good content. Okay, so we'll get back to these things. Let's go over now, if you click on your company name on the top right corner, this is to go to your profile. Click on your company name and it might pop up to tell you, collect pins on different boards. Make a board for each thing you're into. Recipes to try, places to visit, whatever inspires you. So we will see that um, the concept of creating pin boards is very useful on Pinterest. So go ahead and close that. <coughs> right now, my Pinterest profile name is pinterest.com slash victorsbake0155. I don't want that. I want, Victor, I want pinterest.com slash victorsbakery. I want a real memorable and short name. So let's look at some of these settings first before we start pinning because that makes me look like a spam account. A spam account that's just been set up to you know, bother people. I want a real name up here and I want my own logo and other things. So you see on the top right, Edit Profile. Go ahead and click Edit Profile. Here's where I can change the business name, where I can add a company logo, and where I can add the username. The username is the Pinterest address. The weird thing about Pinterest is it won't tell you if your name is taken until you click, until you click the Save button. So before you fill anything else out, choose a name, and then click Save, and then it'll tell you if that name is taken. So for some reason, they don't have enough programmers at their company to program that properly, like every other network that tells you right away, oops, the name is taken. So try to pick a name then that is not taken. Click Save, and then we'll come back to editing the screen. Okay, so then there's a spot for About You, that's a biography. I believe the maximum here is 160 characters. You can keep reusing the same biography that you have on the different networks, that's fine. Or you can change it a little bit per network. So I'm just going to use the same one I've used in my other social networks. Location here, you can put an actual address of a location or simply San Diego, for example.
And then website. If you did fill in a website, you do want to go through the process of confirming your website. We're not going to do it together because it requires that you have a website, number one. And number two is you add this little bit of code to your website. So that's not a requirement. But if you do have a website, you want to go through the process of confirming. And then we'll save in the corner. So you can always go back and edit your profile to fine-tune it more, but uh, I'm going to move on. I want to look at a couple more settings, and then we'll start pinning. You see there's a little gear on the corner where you can edit settings, find friends. So that's that same screen where it was asking you, why not connect your Facebook? You can, if you really want to, you can do it there. Promoted pins. Um, you can, uh, when we talked about Facebook, uh, Facebook has the ability, Twitter has it also, to promote your content. You pay to, find, uh, to have your content found by more people. You can even pay as little as one dollar. I know that my company, uh, when we work with a client on social media, we do recommend them to set a budget to pay a little bit, like once a month, twenty dollars to spend on paying on Facebook or Twitter to reach more people. If you're a beginner and you're and you're trying to reach an audience quickly on social media, that could be a viable thing to do. You you set aside a budget, ten dollars, five dollars, a hundred dollars, you're gonna be able to reach more people. But of course you'll still be able to without paying anything. That's promoted pins. We have analytics, which will give you the statistics of how well the how well the uh, the your efforts have gone, how many have they reached, and such. And there's help and log out. Notice the log out button is kind of hidden. It's like they almost don't want you to leave Pinterest. Log out. But let's take a look at the edit settings. The first option under settings there. This is where you can change your email address, password, language, business type, search privacy. That's if you don't want to get found by the search engines, and usually you do. You want someone to search you and to find you, so really don't turn that on. Question? Can you change the you can. You can change it up on, let's see, where was it? You, if you edit profile, that'll let you change your business name or your username. So under the settings here, what would I recommend? Under personalization, now unfortunately, more and more, you're going to see advertisements on most social networks. You already see them a lot on Facebook. You're starting to see them a little bit more on Twitter. You're gonna see them on um, Pinterest. I remember just very recently they started to put advertisements on Instagram. People hate that. I hate yeah. it. It's yeah. like... They started what? They started putting advertisements on Instagram now. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately that's how it is on most networks now. That's how they make their money, advertisements. And I wish they had a better way to do it, but it's all about advertising. So here it's saying, use sites you visit to improve which recommendations and ads you see, and use info from our advertising partners to improve which recommendations and ads you see. If you turn these off, that doesn't mean don't show me ads. There's no way to get out of ads. These are just saying, would you like to see ads that maybe you might care about? And the way that it's it knows that is because it's going to put a cookie on your computer when you go from website to website, when you went to that technology website, when you went to that video game website, 
and then you come back to Pinterest, it'll say, okay, he was looking at technology video games. Let's show him pins about technology or like video when games. you're building like a website about watches or something, you will show the app there. Exactly. Yeah. So it's tracking you. So if you don't want to get tracked, turn that off. But that still means you're going to get ads. So you might get ads for baby strollers, which you don't care about. So if you leave it on, you might get, you know, ads about about technology that you do. There's no way against no way around ads at the moment, unfortunately. So if you say, well, never mind, I don't want to use Pinterest, there's plenty of other networks, you can turn it off right there, deactivate it now. I think it gives you 30 days if you change your mind, you can log in again, and your stuff will still be there. So we've got profile, we saw that, keep going. Okay, this part right here you might find annoying. You're going to get lots of emails when you set up your account. An email when you get, when your pin is pinned, when you get a new follower, when you get a comment, you get all of these emails. If you don't want all those emails, you can just turn off that first option, turn off emails. You won't get any emails. That's what I recommend because you're already going to get notifications when you're logged in. The notifications will be up on the t on the corner here. This little speech bubble. All your notifications will show up there. So I don't need them in my inbox. They'll show up there. There's also the app. If you've got the app, you'll get notifications on the app. So I don't need them on my email. You can connect your other social networks. Facebook, Twitter, etc., so that you can log in with your with your Google Plus account, for example. And this, uh, let's say you have like a one profile for Facebook, and then you create another business account here in Pinterest, and you still connect the same Facebook account. Or you know what? I'm not exactly sure because usually I don't do this. Uh, I don't I don't do this for the clients because uh, we want to log in to the particular network with that password. I don't know if it, if it will work exactly how you want. You could try it and then see what happens and then let me know. But I know that for us, we don't really want to do that because it's not that useful. So um, I never do it. And if we have any apps, they will show up there on the apps screen if, that's, if it connected any any other apps or other features that will show up there. So on this screen here, let's go ahead and save settings. And now what we'll do is, okay, we've uh, written a biography, added our logo and chosen a name. Okay, we're kind of putting our profile together so that it doesn't look like a spammer. What I want to do then next is create pin boards. So Pinterest is just the latest evolution of the classic pin board. So if you see on the wall over here, in this room on the wall, we've got all of this artwork from all of these students. These are pin boards. There's like ancient Pinterest right there. People could pin up a picture, other people can see it. Let's say in the next room, 224, if we went over to 224 and we saw their pin board, and we saw their stuff, that's like on Pinterest. You look at another account, you're seeing their pin boards. In this room, you've, we've got a board right there in the back that shows people's work. We've also got a board back here behind me that has some stuff. And then we've got a, another board on that wall over there. So each one is a different pin board with different things. Pinterest is the same way. You're not just going to throw all of your pictures up on your account. You're going to put them on different pin boards to organize them. Because when a person follows your account, they can either choose to follow your whole profile or individual boards. So let's say you look at someone's account and they have boards about, let's say I'm Victor's Bakery, and I'm looking at their board, and they've got boards about, uh, you know, cookies and cupcakes and politics 
and astronomy. And let's say I don't care about politics. I only care about the, the food boards. So if I click follow the whole account, I'm going to see all of their things. And I don't want to see that stuff about politics and astronomy or whatever. I only want to see the ones about food. So we do want to create different boards so that people can follow what they care about. The way we create a board is... Do you see a button down at the bottom there? Create board? Let's click create a board. Think about it like folders. These are folders where you're going to put your pictures, where you're going to pin your pictures. What's the name? And I could easily call this like recipes, or architecture, or cupcakes, or whatever. But again, think about using Pinterest in an active voice. Question. This board is for everything that you're going to pin? Or? No, that's the thing. You want to make different boards for everything you're going to pin. One board about legal advice, one board about family legal advice, one board about, you know, estate legal advice. You want different ideas for your particular legal kind of thing. And also you want to think about it in terms of being active. Notice the example. Places to go. Recipes to make. So names of these boards that are active. So I was going to make one called recipes. But instead I'm going to make one called uh, DIY recipes. Do you know what do you guys know what DIY means? Do it yourself. And that's very popular nowadays. It's very popular to share stuff about do it yourself. You know, I don't wanna uh, I guess like what what Pinterest is like for like I only go for it to like make stuff. Exactly. That's one of the biggest audiences that you can reach are people that want to make something, that want to create something. So if you think about that that's how I can be very effective at Pinterest. So here I'm going to write DIY recipes. These are recipes that you can do. Maybe I can be even more specific. DIY cookie recipes. So everything that I'm going to share in this board will be about cookies, cookie recipes. It can be my own recipes. It can be cookie pictures. It can be cookie recipes from other companies too. Pinterest really is also about sharing. Don't think, don't worry about you always putting your own stuff all the time. You can easily share other people's pins. We'll see how very soon, of course. But we want to create some boards first to organize. And whatever you're writing in these in these boxes, like the name and the description, these are those keywords that might get found. Remember earlier, I searched for realty and I found boards and pins with that keyword. So I want to think about using keywords here. But like in real sentences, not just a, a not just a list of keywords, but real sentences. So my description here. Only the best um, DIY recipes featuring the tastiest cookies around. I think you have a limit here also. You wouldn't really write an essay, uh, you have, but you do have 500 characters. Category, what kind of board is this? When we were looking up at the top over here at the categories, that's what that's about. So if you want to get found in a specific category, you've got these categories to choose from. And there's a lot of them. You can attach a map if your pins are attached to a location. Like I have a bakery and it is on Main Street. I can attach it to a location. And I can have secret boards. So only like VIPs can have access to the board, not the regular public. Pinterest doesn't have managers at the moment, like Facebook or Google+. It has the ability for you to approve collaborators. 
So I add other people's names or emails of people that already have a Pinterest account. And then they will be able to add to that board. But I don't think it's as good as the other networks because on Facebook, for example, I can give someone else manager powers and they can then further have more control of the Facebook page. Here it's just letting people add to the board. Nothing about like maybe fixing the, the misspelling on the name of the board or adding more people. It's kind of limited. So maybe on a future version they'll make it more powerful. So I'm going to create And what it does is it took me now inside of the board. My address says pinterest.com slash wikiwiki slash DIY cookie recipes. So I'm in the board. Nothing's here yet. Well, I want to go back to my main profile. So click the name of your profile again. I have one board. I believe in the homework you need to create a few more boards. I forget how many, but usually it's three to five boards. I've got one. So at the least you want to create two more. Maybe not right now, but uh, it's coming on the homework that you're going to need to create boards. Just one Pinterest board is not going to cut it because that is not specific enough. So take a moment, maybe create one more board. Maybe think about how you can tie it to holidays or other fun topics. So Halloween is coming up. You can do here horrible Halloween Are there any baked goods that begin with an H? Does anyone know? There's cupcakes Cookies. Does anything start with an H? Just because I want to do alliteration here. Does anything start with an H? Pudding, you know, pudding, cupcakes, jelly beans, anything with an H? <laughs> Hamburgers. <laughs> Hamburgers made out of cakes. Well, I guess I'll just call this horrible Halloween recipes. What's this about? I'm going to say our collection on the scare tastic Halloween. Cookies, cakes, pies, and everything. What's that? Hazelnut cupcakes or Hazelnut. Yeah, anything with hazelnut. But then it would be specifically only about hazelnut. So then I'll choose a category. <clears throat> Usually in my case, for my company, I'm doing food and drink, but it's okay to choose different categories too. You don't always have to be focused. Here I've got another one that I can do, holidays and events. So always kind of browse the board uh, categories, even though you might, you might think you know which one. I bet most of them glow. Most of them yeah, glow. Some of them, not all of them, but when they do like the, what's it called the, the ice. Oh, the dry ice yeah, to dry make ice. the to make the fog. Yeah, for some perfectly black caramel apples. Oh, well, kind of embarrassed to say, but this morning I had the I had the uh, I had the Burger King Halloween uh, hamburger. Well, how was that? It was good. I know the original was black. Uh, yeah. It's either black sesame seed in Japan or black and very cosmo black Exactly. Black. In Japan, it also had black cheese. That's the one I want to try. So is someone here Americanized, like artificial, or is it actually black seaweed or eat? 
I have no idea. I bet it is the Americanized version. Yeah. It tasted all right. Do you know there's, there's like slimy pina coladas with like figs. Oh, oh this is interesting. Interesting. That's exactly the reaction you want to have when people check your stuff. So get inspired about what you're seeing to think about, that's what I'm going to put online. That's what I'm going to put on Pinterest. So one of our first steps here is we're going to be creating boards. And I can create as many as I want. And I would recommend you to create as many as you want. But what I would say about that is don't create 20 boards and only have one thing on them. I would at least create those 20 boards and have four things in them. Because you're going to get a preview picture of one of them and then three little thumbnails. So if you've got a bunch of boards and one thing, one picture here, one picture here, it kind of looks empty, like you're not quite trying hard enough. So when we actually add pins, you'll see that your picture thumbnail will go right here. You've got four thumbnails. So if you create boards, I always recommend have them have at least four pins so that it doesn't look so empty. So. You've got at least two pin. You've got at least two boards. That's good. Let's move on. We'll talk about. Well, let's add pins to those boards. Let's add pictures. That's the last thing we'll do. Then we'll wrap up for the day. And when we come back, we'll get even more in depth. But at least let's add one pin. Now, how do you think you would add something to Pinterest? How do you think you add, like mathematically, you would add to something? Create a board or. I want to add a, I want to add a pin, a brand new pin. I want to add oh, the pin. Sense, what the, what the pin is. Like when you go on the picture and you press the pin and then you send it to whichever board you want. But that's for someone else. I want to I want to add my own pin right now. Hope that adds something. That's, oh, that's okay. what I was getting at. Let's click that add pin right there. We're going to add our own pin. Later on we'll see that we can share other people's pins. But right now, let's add our own pin. And we might be a little limited right now. Well, first of all, I'm going to click it, and it's going to pop up again. Why don't you add the pin it button? Let's say not now. Let's skip it again one more time. Let's say not now. And you'll need to click that plus button again. And here we have upload a pin or pin from a website. So if I have a picture that I want to upload, there's my button. If I have a picture on my website that I want to share from my website, I can add the link of the website. So for example, I'm going to pull up one of my blogs here. Um, I work with a bunch of clients, but I also have my own blog here on the side, all about comic books and all that cool stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy a link from my blog. I'm going to copy the address and pin from website. So see here, I took the I took the address from my blog and I pasted it here. And what Pinterest will do is it'll look at that page, find any pictures for me to share on Pinterest. I found all of these pictures, all of those pictures. So again, it's very visual. Pinterest is all about the graphics. Even though I've got lots of text on that post, it still is caring about the, the picture. So I'm going to select this photo here. This is just an example. It doesn't quite fit into my company. But I found my picture, I can add a description, so I can add sentences and keywords and such. And then it says, on what board would you like to add it to? I currently got these two, and maybe they don't apply, so I can create a new one at this moment as well. Let's just say it kind of fits into this Halloween one. So first, be careful here, because it's happened to me. I have clicked on the board, and then it did. No, I want to add the description, then click on the board. Or else I have to come back to add the description later. I'm going to say, uh, enjoy some Batman villain. Do you like to dress up for Halloween? I dress up as a normal person when oh, I go no. on Halloween. The background character. Yes, as an extra in a movie. Yeah. 
card? No. I also dress up normally there. Everyone is. Yeah. Enjoy some Batman. You a professional or? No, like whatever. So I'm going to add a description and then choose a board. And now on my profile, I have two boards, one pin, and all my zero followers saw that. But again, whenever we start a new profile, we're going to talk to no one for a little bit. We're going to fill in our profile, we're going to add a few pins, and then when we come back next time, well, we're going to have a little something to offer potential followers, and then we're actually going to try to get followers. I didn't get the picture on like this picture. You didn't show up here? Mm -hmm. I noticed that sometimes you have to refresh your web browser. Oh, okay. Just click the refresh and then we'll wake it up, hopefully. If not, we're about to take a, a lab soon. But this is, uh, this is uh, part of our steps here. We want to have an account. We want to have a few pin boards and a few pins. When we come back next time, we'll talk about, okay, I've got my basic setup. How do I get followers? Because I don't like to see zero followers. Well, of course, the followers uh, relate to potential customers. So when we come back next time, we'll talk about that. Then I'll give the assignment. A uh, quick reminder about the Facebook extra credit. There's no deadline for it, but if you want to get it done this week, that would be good. But if you're doing the Facebook extra credit, turn it in any time before the end of the semester to get points. And if you turned in, if you're missing anything else also, remember to turn it in to get some points. And if there's any problem with your grades, uh, check with me and we'll, we'll figure that out. So. We'll have some lab time now until the usual time, and when we come back next time, we'll learn more about Pinterest.